Welcome to the introduction of Eric's Toolbox. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, this is my toolbox. It's actually a, a piece of software that I have been using in various forms for you know, over the last year and a half, I guess. Um, and it's a piece of software that has helped me a lot whenever I needed to do something for one of my Business Central customers, something that you cannot, cannot do with the standard UI with the tools provided from Microsoft and your only solution otherwise was to fire Visual Studio Code and connect to a sandbox and build an extension and get that to production and and, and hope it works the first time and, and all that good stuff. Um, but there's no nothing that's similar to what we had on Nav in, in back in the days. Um, so I end up creating creating it, and uh, a lot of the components used in this. You, if you have been following the channel, you you will, you will recognize a lot of the stuff that actually has ended up in here. Anyway, let me show you it instead of just talking about it. Um, here's a business central, and um, I will go into the toolbox, and uh, you're met with a two screen mode here. Uh, and it's very simple. We got you can write code in in on the left side, and you get the result on the on the right side. So, so I can I can write a piece of AL code here if I'm able to spell. Um, that's a piece of code. I hit run. The, the code compiles and it's executed. And you can see that here message just outputs on on the console here. If I turn this off. And run the same program again. I get the message as you would normally get a message. So we have the the option to intercept um, this, which is very convenient if you want to output more than one and so on. I can I can make this program just a tad bit more you know, compliant. I'll put in a, a begin and end, and run it. Same thing happens. Um, but now we kind of have a program. Um, perhaps if I want to create a variable, I'll create a var section and I can create a variable. In studio, I can create a uh, record and say, hey, this should be a customer. We got IntelliSense, so we got table names. I could do customer dot and then let's do find first here, IntelliSense again. And hello, and then let's do a replacement here and say customer, and then we get the fields as intelligence. So we can do this. This is a nice program. Let's run it. And it's so you see that as soon as I hit run, the program compiles and it executes. There's no deployment, there's no uploading, there's no nothing because this is not an extension. This is AL code compiling and running AL code. So everything happens in memory inside Business Central. Um, and if I if I did something, something wrong, like this, it's wrong, then I get a bunch of, you know, we got something on line six that we expected to see something else and, and you know, normal programming errors, um, compile errors. Um, so this is a program. So what I can do now here is that I can uh, I can save this as a demo program. Uh, I'll call this number ten. I don't know how many I got already. So now this is named. I can go in and load and look at what other programs I have. Uh, and I have a demo program without ten. So let's actually load that one and see what happens. Um, so this is a tad more complicated. Um, uh, we declare multiple variables. A var oh, intention here is wrong. Let's actually fix that. Um, so we can save it again. Uh, so we loop through the customers. We calculate the balances and find the largest balance and the. Uh, do a message here, and, and let's, let's just run this and see what happens. Well, we get 
six so so we got a message and a message and they just kind of you know come out as as on a printer uh, basically um but here we can see that so this is you know this is regular AL code you can just you know copy this from somewhere if you already have the code and and it, it will run uh but there are two lines here that are are new x set so we can see that x set we don't know normally know al commands called x set this is because when you're in a situation with you know you're working a support task you're you're trying to do something for a customer quite often there's an excel sheet involved and um, so so the the toolbox kind of knows that hey you, you, we can work with an excel sheet so in this case we have used the x set means set the value of row comma column so so we start on row one and then column one and column two so a and b we set the name and the balance so if we click excel up here we can see that we have actually built an excel sheet so when we're done building that we can download it and then we get a um, get this as an excel sheet this could work the other way around so let's actually clear the excel sheet here and then say quite often you know we get some funky um uh, excel sheets from a customer saying hey eric here's an excel sheet and somewhere in this in from d6 till e10 you can find customer numbers and the credit limits can you please update the credit limits uh on these customers so sure so I would go and then let's do a new program here. Uh, so clearly we need a customer variable again. Record customer. Um, we probably also need a integer to loop through some stuff. So we can do for i equal, this was, I guess we just click Excel and check. This was line six to line 10 and column four and five. So for I need 10, do begin. And I'll just create all the plumbing we need here. Um, so customer get, and then there's a command called ex, ex for Excel, ex get, and we get I comma four, that's the customer. And whenever you get something from Excel, uh, from Excel, you get it as a string. So we'll have to quickly create a decimal here. Decimal. Um, then evaluate D from X get I comma five. So column four was the customer number. Column five was the credit limit. And um, did I write X fit? I mean X get. <laughs> um, and then we can do cost dot validate uh, credit limit comma D. And then just you know, whenever you whenever I'm in a situation like this, it's kind of nice, you know, you know let's see if this works the way it's supposed to do before we actually do it. So we can do something like set percent one to percent two. Um, so this is cost name and cost. You see, we got the fields here. So credit limit. Well, let's run this. So set a datum corporation to 43,000, Troy to 34. Just check the Excel. That looks right. So, cost modif modify true. Um, run. I have now updated the uh, credit limits on this customer. Um, so that that you know that was a typical task solved with the, with the toolbox. Uh, um so we two things i want to show you at the end of the video before this gets too long one is that uh, let's save this as updating credit limits on customers 
So we got the program here. So you see when I, I say load, um, there's actually some programs, you can see it has a different origin, um, meaning that you, you, we can share code between. So if, if you have multiple customers, you can, you can set this up so you can pull code from other, um, uh, from other customers, from other environments, from other sandboxes and so on. And, and, and if you say, okay, this, the one I created here, this is awesome. So let me mark that as shared, then that will go to the other, uh, places where you run the toolbox. Uh, and this is all done sharing through a Azure storage account. Um, so that was the one thing I want to show you. The other one is, I'll actually go into setup and then we'll go into uh, users. So when we, f for a user to be able to use the toolbox. You have to be super in the environment you're in. Otherwise, there's no access. But then you still need actual access on top of that. And the first user that go, go opens up the toolbox will be will be added as a user and be assigned what is known as God mode. God mode means that you can do anything. Uh, and I do mean anything. Um, uh, so we have two more levels of, of uh, user access. One is read only, and one is called write in normal tables. So, what's the difference between God mode and write in normal tables? Well, God mode give you access to uh, restricted tables, deal entries, uh, all those tables where normally you'll have to get assigned extra permissions in order to work in. Um, so, by Removing your God mode access, well, you also remove access to, to those tables. We can see here that there's also an audit trail. Uh, so in this case, I can take myself and let me just see what we have here. We can see that right now I have, uh, I have run some, some different stuff. So I can go into uh, this was the, I ran this one and, and before that I ran that one and before that I, I ran this one and so on so we got a complete history of whatever i did um but let's say that I, I think if i scroll down i can probably find something else here uh in this case we can see that the all these were execution but this one is god mode meaning that here so earlier today i ran a a program called edit customer later entry um so let's see, what did I do? Well, that's something really clever, but I just changed the description of, of the first customer ledger entry in the system. Um, and that gets recorded because it was a God mode operation. Then it gets recorded in here with the source explicit. So if you if you do something that touches multiple God mode tables, restricted tables, you'll get several entries per table, not per, if you, you know, you will not get a thousand entries in here. If you modify a thousand records, you'll just get one saying that, hey, this user at this point touched this table with this piece of code. Um, we can also, I'll just hit this one to make sure that I'm not getting, so when I do use the, um, the let's actually just grab that uh, customer, uh, I think it was actually this one. So it's, it came from another one. So I'll just load this one in here. Yeah, that's the program. So what, now I'll run it. So now I get a an exception here saying that, hey, you're actually trying to modify this. I assure you want to in general, you can say allow always. And then that removes the God mode warning, not the God mode logging, but the God mode warning for this table. You can also allow this session. Then we, if you're doing a thousand records, you will not have to answer this question a thousand times. Well, you'll never get to that because you either do that or you say, don't allow. In this case, if I say, hey, that was actually not the purpose, then we're aborted on this one. Um, so even though the toolbox will allow you to touch uh, those sensitive tables, it 
you control which one of your employees should be allowed to use this. And we keep a strict audit trail on, uh, on, on, the, on the usage of it. Um, two, make sure that you can document what you did. Because if you actually upload an extension and remove it again, nobody can see you, you did anything. But with the toolbox, you can, unless you remove the toolbox, but what, you don't want to do that. Anyway, that's the uh, that's my toolbox for, uh, for Business Central. Uh, if you want to know more about it and um, want to try it out yourself, the links below the video for uh, for documentation and for, for the app source link and, and all that good stuff. So um, try it out and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye.